The Mojave Wasteland is home to many powerful factions, but it is also home to a handful of minor factions. Factions without armies, factions without divisive politics, factions that may need our help. One of these is the Followers of the Apocalypse. We will learn their complete story. And it's a story that starts back in time. To properly tell it, we need to go back to the year 2161 and head to what was once known as Southern California. If while exploring the hub, we hitch a ride with one of the caravans, in this instance I'm hitching a ride with the Crimson Caravan, we can travel to a place called the Boneyard. The Boneyard is what remains of Los Angeles, and in the year 2161, it is divided into five sections. If we travel to the section called Aditum, we eventually find a large ruined library. This is the headquarters of the Followers of the Apocalypse. We see their cross-in-circle symbol hanging outside the door. Inside the library, we find aisles of books and a number of follower devotees who are studying furiously. To understand what this group is doing here, we can talk with the founder of the Followers of the Apocalypse, a woman standing in the middle of the library named Nicole. Greetings! Hey! We're very glad you could join us. We hope you have found our humble abode to your satisfaction. Thank you. Can you tell me more about what you worship here? We don't worship so much as follow a set of principles. We want to bring peace back to this wasteland. The world tends toward destruction, so we try to make a difference. How? We try to remind people why the Great War happened in the first place and help ensure it won't ever happen again. Have you been successful at all? We never give up hope. We never will, even though most live by the gun these days. Where did the followers start? Far to the south, near the Great Glow. The times were hard, but we managed to survive. We realized then the Great War must never happen again. Oh, so you started the Followers of the Apocalypse? After my parents were killed by marauders. It was time the killing stopped. It's our goal to make this land the way it used to be, before the war. Who were the marauders? We've never found out. Although we've heard a group live up north in an old ruined city. We've let it rest. Why not? You could get revenge. We're here to make peace, not kill in hatred. Very noble of you, but if it was me, I'd kill them all. I'm not surprised. The followers are here to talk sense into people like you. What made you come up north? There aren't many left down south. The radiation polluted almost everything. Most of the remaining people followed us to start the organization. It's still that radioactive? After 80 years? Well, the rumor is that there was something so important there that the area was saturated with bombs to ensure everything was wiped out. How did your family survive? We lived on the outskirts of the Great Glow. Sickness had started spreading, so we gathered all the people and we made our way north. That's when my parents were killed. So the followers of the Apocalypse were founded by a woman whose parents were murdered by marauders. A woman who, somehow, in this kill-or-be-killed post-apocalyptic wasteland, decided not to seek revenge, and instead moved on and tried to do something better with her life. Fast forward over a hundred years to 2281, we see that Nicole's vision has taken root, not only in California, but it spread to Nevada. We learned from Joshua Graham that Caesar himself, formerly known as Edward Solo, was once a member of the Followers of the Apocalypse. It was with them where he learned Latin, but of course he abandoned their ideals to form the Legion. We are likely to first come upon the Followers of the Apocalypse while exploring Helios I. Inside the former Poseidon Energy Power Plant, now occupied by the NCR, we find a man in a white lab coat named Ignatio Rivas. He gives us our first introduction to the followers here in the Mojave. Hold it. As for me, I'm with the followers of the Apocalypse. Tell me more about the followers of the Apocalypse. Humanity lost many things after the war. Methods of agriculture, techniques for survival. We took it upon ourselves to piece together this knowledge and bring it back to them. Other things weren't lost, but were blocked from our collective memory. Knowledge of what we're capable of and how things spiral out of control. It's in our nature to want to forget truths that keep us awake at night. And for that reason, 
it's all the more important that the followers walk the ways to remind people of them. Do the followers work together with the NCR? We did for a time, but our goals differ. The NCR only cares to expand their wealth and their reach. For us, territory boundaries mean nothing, and prosperity has to be for everyone, not just citizens of the NCR. So parting was inevitable. While the NCR pushes east, we clean up the mess they leave behind, try to provide some stability. Where are the followers based around here? We're scattered mostly. We go where we're needed. Our largest presence is in Freeside at Old Mormon Fort. Other than that, I know Dr. Usanagi set up a practice near the Crimson Caravan, and a man we train is operating out of the Aerotech building. Another man, Tom Anderson, was looking into water supply problems in Westside, but that was a while ago. Ignacio gives us a great rundown of the followers' presence here in the Mojave. We'll be sure to meet all of the people that he mentioned. But as for Ignacio himself, I did a separate video all about Helios 1. And in that video, I recounted everything that he does here. You can watch that video here. Well, he mentioned that the headquarters was at the Old Mormon Fort, but before we head there, let's check in with Dr. Usanagi at the New Vegas Medical Clinic. This is right across the road from the Crimson Caravan. From the outside, it's an unassuming clinic. The windows are boarded up and covered in graffiti. But if we look closely, on a wall above the canopy, we see a very familiar symbol of a cross in a circle. Inside the New Vegas Medical Clinic, we find a woman in a lab coat standing behind the counter. Her name is Dr. Usanagi. Welcome to the New Vegas Medical Clinic. I'm a fully qualified physician and can fix whatever is wrong with you for a reasonable fee. If you've got the caps, I've also got several implants available to enhance your physical attributes. Tell me about the clinic. Everything you see is funded by the followers of the apocalypse. We rely a lot on charity to provide low-cost medical services to the less fortunate. Are you one of the followers of the apocalypse? Yes, I am. I received my medical training at the Angels Boneyard Medical University back in the NCR. It's not a requirement to be a follower to enter the university, but I believe in what they do, so I joined them. So it sounds like the boneyard we visited so many years ago is still around and kicking and has grown into a fully-fledged university. Good job, Nicole. So doctor, what do the followers believe in? We believe that technology for basic necessities like food, water, and medicine should be shared, not hoarded. We're also strongly in favor of proper education. I've come across more than a few doctors whose techniques came out of the back of a magazine. Are the followers part of the NCR? We've worked with them in the past. The NCR became too focused on things like patents and profitability, so the followers go their own way now. The NCR and the followers have a cool relationship at the moment. We see them as oppressive, and they view us as anarchists. Do the followers have a headquarters around here? Yes, the Mormon Ford in Freeside. It's hard to miss. Can I make a donation to the followers? Of course. We prefer bulk donations of 500 caps. It's apparently a lot easier on the accountants for some reason. <laughs> she only accepts donations in chunks of 500 caps, which seems like a big deterrent if they were really taking donations. At any rate, this donation only buys us positive reputation with the followers, but we'll get all the reputation we need simply by completing their quests. But now that we've learned more about the followers, we can ask Dr. Usanagi exactly what she's doing here. Doctor, you mentioned something about implants earlier. What kind of implants do you have available? I have several basic implants available that can enhance your physical abilities, make you faster, smarter, stronger, that sort of thing. I've also got two much more expensive implants. One's a subdermal implant that will make you more resistant to damage. The other implant induces a mild regenerative effect. Your wounds will practically heal before your eyes. Sounds good. I'd love to buy an implant. One other thing I forgot to mention. Your body may be able to handle only a limited number of implants. The healthier you are, the more implants I'll be able to give you. Now, what surgery are you considering? What she means by this is that the number of implants we can purchase are equal to our endurance special stat. So if we have five endurance, we can only buy five implants we find a menu of different implants that we can install, nine in total. So to get all of them, we not only have to have a lot of caps, but also nine endurance. We can start by saying, I want to be more intelligent. For 4,000 caps, I can install a logic coprocessor. This implant appears as the intelligence implant perk on our Pip-Boy. 
your cerebral cortex has been enhanced with the Logic coprocessor, increasing your intelligence by one. After purchasing an implant, when we next return and ask for another implant, she does an endurance check. If we have enough endurance... All right, let me do a quick test to make sure your body can handle another implant. All right, you're healthy enough to handle another one. Which surgery are you considering? But if we don't have enough endurance... I'm afraid you can't handle any more implants right now. Your body isn't durable enough to take it. Sorry. And sadly, there is no way to temporarily increase our endurance to get these implants. Even if we take a chem like buff out, which increases our endurance by plus three, it doesn't work. It also doesn't work if we purchase the endurance implant. The only thing we can do to increase our endurance to allow us to have more implants is to purchase the intense training perk when we level up, and then use that perk to buy more points of endurance. Also, the cutoff number for our special stats is 10, so if we already have 10 of a special stat, and we try to buy the implant that increases it, in this case agility, she tells us, your reaction times are already so fast, it's a wonder you can't catch bullets. The reflex booster can't make you any faster. So instead, we can explore the others. Boost my charisma. The empathy synthesizer will allow you to more easily pick up on subtle emotions and body language. The price is 4,000 caps. This gives us the charisma implant perk. Your prefrontal cortex has been enhanced with the empathy synthesizer, increasing your charisma by one. Next, we can say, make me more perceptive. The optics enhancer, as the name suggests, gets attached directly to your optic nerve. The price is 4,000 caps. Your optic nerve has been enhanced with the optics enhancer, increasing your perception by one. Next, we can try strength. I can implant the Hypertrophy Accelerator for 4,000 caps. It will boost your adrenal glands and quickly increase your muscle mass. Your muscle mass has been enhanced with the Hypertrophy Accelerator, increasing your strength by one. Then we can say, I'm interested in the subdermal implant. That would be the Nemian Subdermal Armor. It's a bit pricey, 8,000 caps, but the implant causes your skin cells to be bolstered with iron. It won't make you bulletproof, but it will make you a little harder to injure. If we purchase this very expensive implant, we get the Subdermal Armor Perk. Your skin has been toughened by the Nemean Subdermal Armor, increasing your total damage threshold by four. Then we can say increase my endurance. The Nociception Regulator modifies your cardiovascular system and you won't tire as quickly. The price is 4,000 caps, same as most other implants. Your nervous system has been enhanced with the nociception regulator, increasing your endurance by one. Hey doctor, can you make me luckier? If I implant the probability calculator in your frontal lobe, you'll be able to calculate odds a little better. It's not quite the same as making you luckier, but you'll be able to nudge things your way more often. I can do the implant for 4,000 caps. With that, our frontal lobe has been enhanced with the probability calculator, increasing our luck by one. And finally, we can say, I'd like the regenerating ability. That's the Phoenix Monocyte Breeder. The implant speeds up cell regeneration, an effect similar to that of some lizards and sea creatures. The implant is very expensive, however. 12,000 caps. With that, we get the Monocyte Breeder perk. Your regenerative ability has been enhanced by the Phoenix Monocyte Breeder implant, causing you to slowly regenerate lost hit points. These implants are so expensive, they're a great way to spend all that gold we got from the Sierra Madre. Dr. Usanagi also functions as a merchant, and she gives people with good reputation with the followers a discount. Because you're a friend of the followers, I can give you a bit of a discount. She sells basic medical equipment, including a tiny stash of magazines. And of course, she can also heal us, fix our broken limbs, and heal our radiation. We see that Dr. Usanagi is guarded by some clinic guards. So it looks like there is a strong arm to the followers. Either that or these are mercenaries. We can explore the operating rooms. Looks like she does perform surgery here. In the back, we find a Mark I auto dock, but we learn that this is an ancient and very obsolete version of the auto dock. Despite the similarities in appearance to more advanced models, it shares no compatible parts. This is because the autodoc plays an important role in the Legion quests. We have to salvage parts from an autodoc later, and they didn't want to make it easy for us, so the ones we find here don't have compatible parts. It looks like the followers are still dedicated to education. We find a medical student here, and that's about it for the clinic.
Now we need to track down their headquarters. We learned that their headquarters were the Old Mormon Fort in Freeside. We find that the Old Mormon Fort was once called the Old Las Vegas Mormon State Historical Park. We see why the followers are using it. It's a large walled castle with a huge wooden gate. On the other side of the wall, we find a small encampment. We see a flagpole in the middle, and flying from the flagpole is the follower's symbol, the cross in the circle. Now we've been here before. The followers are a touch point for many of the quests we've already completed in the game. I've done videos on many of these, and I'm going to link to them in a comment that I'll pin on this video. So if you want to learn more, you can follow up with those videos. We see a sandbag barricade out front where the followers have some guards. This is where we found Beatrix, whom we convinced to go to the Atomic Wrangler to sell her services. To the south of this, we find a refugee tent. Here we find a poor fellow who was beat up by the NCR. We learned about these guys in my video on the Kings. And just behind this tent is a doorway to the Northwestern Tower. This Northwestern Tower serves as a small lab and the bedroom of the followers' leader here in the Mojave, Julie Farkas. Here we will sometimes find Jerry the Punk if we manage to get approval to send him here from the Great Khan's camp, which I covered in my video on the Great Khan's. If we head upstairs, we find a snow globe for the Mormon fort on top of one of the bookshelves. You have found a limited edition Mojave landmark snow globe. We can snag this sucker and add it to our collection back at the Lucky 38. And look at that, almost done. We'll find Julie in this tower at night, but during the day she's downstairs wandering the camp. To continue exploring, we can go to the southwestern tent. Here we find a fellow named Arcade Ganon. This is an important guy with a lot of really interesting lore, but we'll cover Arcade's story when I do my video dedicated to him, which is coming soon. We see that the followers are taking care of drunks and gamblers here, and we also find refugees. Here is Kenny Weathers, and we also find the rest of his family here. In a nearby tent, we find his sister and mother, Sammy and Mrs. Weathers. These are the slaves we released from the slave pen at Cottonwood Cove, which I covered in that video. There's Julie, walking around with her killer mohawk. Looks like she took grooming inspiration from the founders of the followers, Nicole. We'll check in with her in a minute, but to continue our tour, we find more followers doctors hanging out by these tents. Looks like the followers guards sleep right next to the people they're helping, the drunks and the gamblers. There is one more interior cell. We find another watchtower to the southeast, but not much is here. Inside we find crates, a generator, lots of boxes, and then upstairs, a whole bunch of tin cans. Back outside, we can finish exploring the final two tents, but these are mostly empty. They're used for storage and bedrooms. When done exploring, we can go find Julie. Are you here to drop off medical supplies? Leave them with the rest in the middle of the courtyard. Well, sounds like she needs some medical supplies. But first, let's ask her more about the followers. Hey, Julie, what is this place? The Old Mormon Fort serves as the regional hub for the followers of the Apocalypse. I am the administrator for this region. Who were the followers of the Apocalypse? We arose from the boneyards of Adidam years ago. Since then, we have made it our mission to rebuild the wasteland and re-educate its inhabitants. We hope to forge a brave new world free of war and poverty by sharing knowledge and resources. Our primary goal is the free exchange of ideas. What do you do here? The followers of the apocalypse aren't just interested in research. We care for our fellow man and do everything we can to help humanity. Here in Freeside, we provide food and medical services for those in need. We also have organized reconstruction efforts. With the help of Bill Ronte, we were able to install a water pump just west of here, but the Kings quickly took control of the pump. I'll show you what she's talking about. If we head to the northeastern corner of Freeside, we find a small farm, and next to it, a water pump. Looks like this may be part of a well, but as we get close... The pump is property of the King. You'll need to pay if you want a drink. The King controls the water pump. If you want water, you need to pay like everyone else. Why charge for water? If we let everyone run amok, the damn NCR would shut us down. Gotta have some way to regulate usage. All right, how much for a drink? Just a few caps for a good long swig. Don't get wise. We charge per use, so make that first drink worth the caps. After paying 10 caps, we can then take a drink from the spigot, but as soon as we do, it gets set to owned again, and the kings will attack if we drink from it without paying. We can learn more about this situation from Julie. Julie, can you tell me more about Freeside? What did you want to know? What's all the fuss about the water pump? 
Bill Bronte installed that pump a few years ago, back when he was sober. It was a major improvement for the community. But lately, the Kings have started charging locals to use it, and NCR squatters twice as much. That'll come to no good. So the Kings have a beef with the NCR, it seems. Julie then fills us in on some of the locals of Freeside. I've already done a video about the Kings, the Van Graffs, and the Atomic Wrangler. So to learn more about them, you can find those videos linked below. But Julie, can you tell me more about Mick and Ralph? I know they sell a lot of guns, as if that's what Freeside needs. I hear Mick handles the guns. No idea what Ralph does. Well, things seem pretty rough here in Freeside. More than rough. It's a damn mess. Freeside townies are constantly picking fights with NCR civilians. Thugs and thieves are always looking for a victim, and the local families are just sitting back making caps on the mess. Freeside is in dire need, but no one has been man enough to step up. The followers can only do so much to stem the tide. Is there anything I can do to help? There is always something needing done. A few souls here in Freeside could be great assets to the community, if they'd kick their addictions. We need a regular supply of medicine organized, but the Crimson Caravan wants too many caps for what we need. Lastly, tensions between the townies and NCR tourists have been going downhill fast lately. A lot of innocent people will get hurt if things blow up. So when we first met, you thought I was coming with medical supplies. Do you need a lot of medical supplies? Rates of injury and illness in Freeside are very high. Supplies don't last long. What do you need? Medex, Radaway, and Fixer are Freeside essentials. I can't pay you for any supplies you bring in, but I could discount the charge for our services. We can give her what we have on our inventory. We'll be sure to do that in a bit. But we can also get a quest from her by saying, seems like you need a steady supply, not just whatever I can grab for you. So far, the Crimson Caravan won't cut us a deal. If you can convince them or some other merchant to work with us, I'll discount supplies to you. Which merchants might be willing to make a deal? You might ask around at Mick and Ralph's, or go see the Garrett's, though I suspect they're too busy poisoning Freeside to help it out. All right, you've got yourself a deal. Just come see me when you've got some supplies to turn in. Now we can head out to see if we can track down someone who can supply the followers with steady shipments of medicine. She mentioned three different people. We'll first check in with Mick and Ralph here in Freeside. Mick is in the back selling his specialty guns, but we usually find Ralph manning the counter up front. How's it going, friend? Looking for anything special? The followers are looking to set up a supply deal. We don't have the stills and equipment to supply the amount of meds they're looking to purchase. You could check with other wasteland merchants, but I think your best bet would be the Atomic Wrangler. They've got a bunch of stills and a seemingly endless supply of grain alcohol, which could be used as anesthetic or disinfectant. Well, sounds like Mick and Ralph aren't interested. So, we can head on over to the Crimson Caravan. I already did a video all about the Crimson Caravan, and we uncovered all of their dark secrets. It's no wonder, then, that they're not really in the charitable mood. We don't find an option to even mention the followers with Blake. Or if we head into the headquarters, we don't find an option to talk about the followers with Alice McClafferty, who's in charge of the caravan here in the Mojave, nor from her associate, Don Hostetler. This leaves us with really only one option, to talk with the Garrett twins at the Atomic Wrangler. But Julie has already expressed doubt that they would be willing to help us. After all, they're responsible for boozing up the people of Freeside and getting them addicted to chems. But we can head on over to see what they have to say. We find the Atomic Wrangler, which I did a video about, in the northwestern corner of Freeside. Heading on inside, we see the Garrett twins hard at work polishing glassware by the front counter. We can first talk with Francine. So it turns out the Almeritas were into some serious shit. I always suspected that crew was dirty. She is referencing the work we did in our video on Gamora. Hey Francine, the followers are looking to trade for supplies. Interesting. Well, you're gonna need to speak with my brother James. He handles all of the trading contracts and general operations. Oh, all right. Moving on over to her brother, James. Welcome back, friend. What can I get you? Hey, James, the followers need to find someone to trade with for supplies. Really now? Well, this is news. We could possibly supply what they need, but they would need to supply us in kind. They have the tech know-how to make our stills work more efficiently. Pure alcohol means we can get our customers drunk quicker. Getting our customers drunk quicker means more caps spent at the tables and stuffing slots, if you know what I mean. Plus, the extra alcohol can serve as surgical disinfectant for their needs. The followers are a good lot. They've stitched up our boys in the past. 
I might be able to work something out. Good. We can supply them with all the med they need. For the fixer, we'll only be able to send over some basic drug components. We're not in the business of getting people off drugs, so we don't really dabble in that side of things. The followers should be able to whip some up with what we have available, though. They just need to agree to fix up our stills and keep them maintained, plus cover the cost for raw materials needed to make the alcohol. So sounds like the Garretts are willing, as long as the followers agree to fix up and maintain their stills. But would they do such a thing, considering their strong beliefs? Well, the only way to find out is to head back to the old Mormon fort and talk with Julie about it. Hey, Julie, I think I found someone who'd be willing to cover your supplies. That's phenomenal. Who did you find? Well, it's the Garrett twins. They supply Freeside with drugs and liquor. From my point of view, they're just better organized pushers. Upgrading their stills would increase their supply of liquor and chems. How does that help Freeside? We have three ways to try to convince her. We can say, well, you get your chems, and then you can help anyone who gets addicted. True, we could help addicts, but the cycle of addiction, recovery, and relapse would remain. That doesn't do it, leaving us with two more options, but Julie has the same response no matter which of these we choose. So we'll say, Julie, with a surplus of supplies, you could use your caps and influence to expand. Good point. We wouldn't be paying anything for their supplies, just a portion of our food waste to make ethanol. We get food from nearby wasteland farmers in exchange for medical services, so we could put our caps back into helping Freeside. Tell the Garretts we'll keep their stills running if they provide us with supplies. Thank you for arranging this. You've been a godsend. All right, so Julie has agreed. We can now head back to the Atomic Wrangler and tell James. Hey, James, I spoke with Julie Farkas. She says the followers will accept your offer. Hey, that's great. We'll get some supplies sent over today as a show of good faith. Once our stills are upgraded, we'll never be short on liquor for our patrons. If Jacob Hoff is sober, we might even have a few new drinks on tap. Most might view us as drug-dealing enablers around here, but honestly, we care about our patrons. It's bad business for people to get addicted. We've got enough crime in Freeside without a bunch of strung-out junkies robbing traders and gamblers to afford their next fix. Well, that does make sense. If his patrons are too addicted to hold down steady work, they can't buy booze, so their sobriety is in his best interest. With that, we gain Freeside fame, and we can head back to the fort to tell Julie the good news. The Garretts should be sending over supplies shortly. I'm honestly pleasantly surprised they would help us out, but I can see the Garretts aren't doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. Well, it looks like you've earned yourself a discount on supplies now that we'll be fully covered. This supply deal will aid our work immensely. And after checking in with her, we gain followers of the Apocalypse fame. But now that they have a steady supply of chems and medicine, we can see if the followers need any help helping the addicts around Freeside. Julie, didn't you say something about helping some of the local addicts? Yes, old Bill Ronte and Jacob Hoff. They're not going to kick their habits on their own. With that, we begin the quest, High Times. Julie, can you tell me more about Bill Ronte? Old Bill Ronte is an exceptionally skilled machinist. He could fix the problems we've been having with Freeside's water pump, if he sobered up. What about Jacob? The Garretts hooked Jacob on chems when he was working for them. Ironic, since he used to homebrew detox chems. He's a natural chemist. Where should I start looking? In Freeside, the drunks and drug addicts flock in and around the Atomic Wrangler. I'd start there. All right, I'll see what I can do to help. Sobering them up and putting them back to work would go a long way toward helping Freeside. To find Bill Ronte, we travel to the Atomic Wrangler. Right next to the Atomic Wrangler is a ruined storefront. Lying on the ground next to a staircase surrounded by empty bottles of booze is Bill Ronte. You seen Dixon around? He said he'd be back today. Dixon. We know Dixon. He usually hangs outside Mick and Ralph's. Bill, Julie Farkas sent me to help you sober up. Julie? Uh, I love Julie. She's such a nice lady. One time I was working on the water pump and she came over, put her hand on my shoulder and told me I was doing a great job. <laughs> great job, she says. I just choked up and didn't say nothing. Compliments are so rare these days. Why don't you stop drinking? Drop drinking? <laughs> I've been drinking for a straight month. Listen, I I've tried to stop, but the withdrawal symptoms are so bad I feel like I'm going to die. I can't stop now. How can you afford so much alcohol? Dixon sells me booze dirt cheap. It does the job, but it tastes like paint thinner, and I feel like I'm going to die if I stop drinking for a day. 
I swear that guy's trying to kill me, but what can I do? Drinking other booze doesn't cure the sickness like he is. So it sounds like Bill is getting his supply from a dealer named Dixon. I wonder if the same is true for Jacob. To find Jacob, we head towards Mick and Ralph's, which is coincidentally really close to Dixon. Across the street from Mick and Ralph's, we find a ruined apartment complex. At the very back of the ruins, we find Jacob Hoff lying on the ground surrounded by empty jet inhalers. You have chems, buddy? I could really use a fix. Julie Farkas says you could use some help. Julie's a saint, but I don't need help. I feel young and strong, as long as I get my chems. You look pretty bad, Jacob. You should probably stop using chems. Why stop? I feel great. No worries. My guy will be here soon enough. Just wait. Who's supplying you? If I had two caps to scrape together, I'd buy the materials to make my own. But my damn hands won't stop shaking. This guy named Dixon. Something about him seems sketchy, but I can't stop now. Last time I stopped, I felt like I was going to turn inside out. At this point, I'm mostly buying his stuff just so I don't feel sick. Speaking of which, do you have any spare caps? This poor guy is in a desperate state. We need to confront Dixon. Turning around, we find Dixon peddling his wares outside Mick and Ralph's. Looking for a fix, man? I got what you need. Do you know anything about Bill or Jacob? Yeah, man. Those cats are out of their domes addicted to my shit. They can't get enough pretty hilarious to watch. Are you trying to kill your customers? Those fools are from NCR. I love seeing those squatters in agony. We were doing just fine before those shits came here and made a mess of things. We don't need NCR eggheads wandering around confusing things. I see. So he's a local, and he hates the NCR. He's doing this as a way to get back at them. Look, Dixon, I need you to stop supplying Bill and Jacob. Really? Ah, oh, you're such a saint. You know what? I might be willing to stop, if there's something in it for me. We find a few options. We could start by saying, maybe some caps could persuade you to leave them alone. 300 caps and I'll stop selling to them. Otherwise, it is just too much fun watching them spiral downward. Never mind, I don't have the caps for that. <laughs> you sorry sad sack. Come back when you've got the caps. Or we can give him the caps and say, alright, take the caps and leave them alone. Hey, nice doing business with you, Mr. Moneybags. Good luck getting them healthy. If they don't get a whole lot of fixer soon, withdrawal will kill them. Screw that. It'd be a lot cheaper and easier for me to kill you. Ooh, I always enjoy a good scrap. Watch out! And then... <laughs> On his corpse, we find two unique items. Dixon's jet and Dixon's whiskey. His jet is a weaker form of jet, granting only plus 10 to action points upon inhaling, and it only increases your maximum action points by 10 for four minutes, compared to 15 in both cases from regular jet. Dixon's jet is way cheaper than regular jet, but it has a 50% chance to get you addicted, compared to only a 20% chance from regular jet. Dixon's whiskey is also a cheaper version of whiskey. It doubles the intelligence penalty we get from drinking it, it does not grant us a charisma bonus, and like his jet, it has a much higher chance of addiction, a 50% chance compared to standard whiskey's 10% chance. It's no wonder then why Dixon's customers are getting addicted so quickly. But assuming we don't want to kill him and we don't want to pay to bribe him, we can pass a pretty low speech check, or this becomes a sneering imperialist check, if we have the perk, to say, So the NCR is supplying you with cheap chems? What, to keep Freeside down? Wait, man, you can't go around saying shit like that. Okay, I get your point. You won't have to worry about me supplying those two anymore. I guess the speech check worked because, though false, if we were to spread this rumor around town, it may ruin his reputation or get him in trouble with some of the other locals. After convincing Dixon to stop, we can head back to Jacob. So you're back. Got any chems for me yet? I took care of the dealer. Now you can clean up. What? I need a fix now! I want to help you get well, Jacob. Fine. If you really care so much, then give me some shots of fixer to calm down these shakes. I'm gonna need at least ten shots to get me through the week. From there, the followers should be able to help. We can help Jacob here in three different ways. We can pass a 50 speech check to say, Jacob, be strong. You just need the support of your friends to get through this. I think you're right. 
I've been through worse. I'll go to the fort and see if the followers can watch over me while I recover. In which case he gets up and walks off. Or we can say, I've got the detox chems you need. Thank God. I thought I was gonna die if you didn't come back soon. I'm gonna head to the followers' fort to get some rest and detox. You've saved my life, friend. Which has the same result, but this costs us 10 Fixer. Or we can pass a science check of 50 to say a combination of Fixer, Psycho, and Buff Out would do it all in one shot. Never thought about using that combination before. Should be able to get through this with that. All this does is allows us to give him fewer chems to detox. So instead of 10 Fixer, we give him one Fixer, one Psycho, and one Buff Out. But passing the speech check is of course best of all. No matter which option we choose, he walks all the way to the Atomic Wrangler, presumably to do some work. Can't talk. Much work to do at the fort and Atomic Wrangler. I'm guessing that he's the follower's representative who maintains the Garrett's stills as part of their trade agreement. Next, we find Bill Ronte exactly where we left him. Come on, man, I'm dying here. You won't be seeing Dixon anymore. What the hell? Why? I need alcohol, man. I'm gonna die if I don't get a drink. You need to kick the habit, Bill. I can help you. The only way you can help me now is a load of detox chems. What do you need? At least a couple of doses of Fixer, a bottle of whiskey, and Radaway. Right I can take doses of Fixer and Radaway right to gradually flush my system over time while drinking decreasing shots of diluted whiskey. This shit better be worth it, man. Well, I don't have them on me right now. Withdrawal could kill me if I don't get them soon. This leaves us with two options. We can pass a science check of 50 to say, regulating decreasing doses of booze with a couple shots of Fixer should do it. Man, you're one hell of an egghead. If you think it'll work, I'll give it a shot. In which case, we can send him back to the fort with two doses of Fixer and a bottle of whiskey, or we can bypass this all by simply passing a speech check of 50 to say, Bill, Julie and the rest of your friends miss you. They need your help. Oh, Julie, I've really screwed things up. I'll head over to the fort and get some rest. This has gone on too long. In which case we gain Freeside fame and Bill stands up and walks on over to the old Mormon fort. We find him again sitting down in one of the tents. Hey, thanks for helping me out. Being back and working really saved my life. With Bill and Jacob cleaned up, we can head back to Julie to tell her the good news. I helped with that addiction problem you mentioned. I saw them. Thank you so much for helping them. This means a lot to the followers of the apocalypse. You have our thanks. If you need some medical supplies, come see me. With Jacob working with us, we should be able to spare a stim or fixer once a day. With that, we complete High Times, gain a huge dose of Followers of the Apocalypse fame, and we become idolized with the Followers of the Apocalypse. Hey Julie, if I wanted to calm things down here in Freeside, where should I start? The big man around here is the king. Not much happens in Freeside that he doesn't know about. He has the most influence locally, and some of his crew haven't helped the situation by harassing NCR citizens and charging double for water. Some NCR soldiers have been bringing in supplies, but none of it is going to Freeside locals. I've tried to speak to both sides to no avail. She is referring to events that I covered in my video about the Kings, which I link to in the description below. With the quest High Times done, we can visit Julie once a day to get some free chems. Hey Julie, you said you could spare some supplies? Sure. Would you like a stim pack, fixer, or rat away? Oh, how about a stim pack? You'll need to wait another 24 hours for us to get more made. We need everything else we currently have. And she gives us her last stim pack. Or if we are feeling generous, instead of taking Kim's, we can drop some off. Great, what do you have? We have the option to donate fixer, medex, or rat away. How much do you have to donate? We can donate up to three each time until we're out. Thanks. Anything else? Now, even though we're idolized, we need to do this over and over again, donating as much Fixer, Medex, and right away as we can, until we reach a certain point. We know we've donated enough Medex when Julie stops us and says, It looks like we've got enough Medex for the moment, but it always helps to be prepared with a backup supply. How much do you have to donate? We can continue to donate if we want to, but instead we should focus on another chem like Radaway. We know we've donated enough Radaway when she stops us and says, We have a good stock of Radaway at this point, but every extra bit helps. How much do you have to donate? And then we continue to donate Fixer until she stops us and says, 
With your help, we now have a small overstock of Fixer. However, it never hurts to have extra. How much do you have to donate? Once we hear those three responses, when we say, that's all for now, Julie says... Good to hear. Oh, by the way, I got a shipment of magazines from home I'd be willing to sell if you're interested. Let me take a look at these magazines. Take a look. She now has an expanded inventory, and we can purchase as many of these as we want. But, if we completely back out of this dialogue tree, let her leave, maybe zone out of the tower, or fast travel and come back, the next time we do, we can say I have more medical supplies to drop off, but her response is... It looks like you took care of our short-term supply issues. In thanks, you can have a discount on medical services with me. Also, I would like to extend an invitation to join the followers of the Apocalypse. Your work here in the Old Mormon Fort has been invaluable, and I can't think of a more worthy recruit. Will you join us? She asks us to join. This is great, but it's easy to miss. Even though we were idolized with the followers by completing all of their quests, she didn't offer us an invitation to join until we had fully stocked up their chem stores. But now we have the option. And we can ask, what does it mean to join the followers of the Apocalypse? Our aim is to gradually shape a better, brighter future for the Wasteland. We seek to heal the planet through efforts not unlike the medicine and education we offer here in the Old Mormon Fort. All we ask is members and those seeking aid do their best to help those in need when the opportunity arises. You bet I'll join. Excellent! The Follower's mission will be better served with someone like yourself traveling around the Mojave. As a representative of the Followers, I present you with your very own lab coat. Wear it well, and may it aid our cause. Also, before I forget, here's a key to a safe house you can use to rest if you happen to be in the area. I'll just mark it on your map. With that, we get a reinforced Follower's lab coat and a key to the Follower's safe house. Now in the base game, instead of the reinforced lab coat, we get a regular one. The regular one has a DT of zero. Ah, but it grants plus 10 to medicine and 10 to science. However, I remember reading a rumor that it was always intended for this lab coat to be reinforced, but that they simply ran out of time and it was cut from the game. If you install any of the major bug fix mods out there for Fallout New Vegas, this lab coat is restored and reinforced as intended. The reinforced version has a DT of eight, making it a pretty useful piece of light armor, what with its plus 10 to medicine and 10 to science. It's a handsome little lab coat, a white lab coat with some sort of communicator over the right breast. On the left shoulder, we see the followers of the apocalypse cross in circle symbol. And on the left shoulder, we see the rod of Asclepius. This was the rod wielded by the Greek god Asclepius in Greek mythology. He was the god associated with healing and medicine. And finally, we can explore the followers safe house. We find the followers safe house if we follow the road northwest out of Vegas towards Jacobstown. We find it across the road from the Ruby Hill Mine. Upon arrival, we find a big brick structure with the follower symbol posted outside, just in sight of New Vegas. With the key in hand, we can open the front door, and we arrive in a large room, which we can use as a player home. We see the follower symbol on the wall, and in this first room, some tables and shelves for storage, and a workbench against the southwestern wall. In the next room, we see refrigerators, shelving, and three beds. Each of these beds is bedecked with gear that we can freely take. We find a stack of magazines on one bed, fixing things and true police stories, along with a hunting shotgun and shotgun shells. We can also find a full suit of reinforced combat armor. On the middle bed, we find two more magazines, a Programmer's Digest and a Today's Physician, as well as the all-purpose science suit. This is a unique piece of clothing that we can't find anywhere else in the game. The all-purpose science suit looks exactly like an Enclave scientist outfit, which is only worn by Dr. Henry if we make certain faction decisions towards the end of the game. The all-purpose science suit has a DT of 13 and grants plus 5 to science. 
It may be that the developers cut the reinforced version of the followers lab code from the game and instead gave us a version with a zero DT due to the existence of this science suit, but that's just speculation. At any rate, without mods, the all-purpose science suit is unique in that it has the highest damage threshold to weight ratio in the entire game, which is incredibly important for characters specced into light armor or who want to make use of the pack rat perk. For them, this would be the best suit of full armor in the game, because this outfit only weighs two pounds. Even though it looks like a reskinned radiation suit, the all-purpose science suit can only be repaired with a scientist outfit, or with other light armor and clothing if you have the jury rigging perk. On this bed, we find stim packs, a pulse mine, a pulse grenade, and a multi-plas rifle. This is not a unique weapon, but it is one of the most powerful plasma rifles in the entire game. And on the final bed, we find some Rad X, Rad Away, a plasma grenade, two more magazines, Law Fantoma and Future Weapons Today, a plasma mine, and a tri-beam laser rifle. Another fantastic laser weapon. We also find an advanced radiation suit here, another wonderful but not unique item. There's plenty of storage for food and gear to the southwest, and every three days or so, the safe house will be visited by a Followers of the Apocalypse member named Dr. Luria. May I help you? Why are you here? I like to check up on things from time to time. I can't let this place fall apart now, can I? Since you're here, I can offer you some medical supplies. I can't give you everything I have, but I can give you a few things. Are you always here? I'm usually here a few days out of the week, mostly to keep the fridge stocked. Plus, it's nice to get away from it all every now and then. I could use some stims. I can give you stims or radiation supplies. Which would you prefer? Oh, I'll just take regular stims. Here you go. And she gives us three stim packs. Fantastic. And that is the full story of the followers of the apocalypse in the Mojave. We will learn a little bit more about some of their other members in upcoming videos. I'm working on a video about Arcade Ganon right now, as well as some of the other minor members that are spread around the Mojave. We also learn more about the followers in Fallout 1 because the followers in Fallout 1 have a bit of a conflict with another group called the Children of the Cathedral. But upon exploring that conflict, we reveal a major plot spoiler. So I'm going to save my video talking about the followers from Fallout 1 until I start my series on Fallout 1. So stay tuned for that. I publish many new videos every single week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Mankind Redefined. On one side, we have Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, and on the other side, we have a rather synthetic version. My designs come on shirts in a wide array of colors and in a variety of both men's and women's sizes. The designs also come on a bunch of other gear, mugs, posters, prints, pillows, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new video.